Today we are doing the Falling Star quest license that I have not done yet and I'm very excited to do. So let's get into doing that. First things first, I think we have to check our mail. Um, but there, I know there's someone over here that we need to talk to. We've seen them before. Well, maybe I've deleted it. I don't know. Let's go over here. Let's see. Voice over John taking over now. So as we move behind the moon base over here, we see someone called Field Archivist Sierly. She's our first point of contact for this quest. Once you finish speaking with her, the quest will progress and you will be told to go speak with local scouts in the area. That means in the lowland shore zone. At this point, you just need to go start talking to different scouts, different parts of the map. Each of them will have a different set of dialogue and it's not voiced over, but that's fine. You just read it and it'll point you into different directions where you need to go to find the scout. If you want to jump straight to the scout that'll progress the quest, I'll show you where that is right now. The scout in the Har Mire is the one that actually saw the meteor fall. So where you need to go is the one that overlooks the Har Mire right here. Once you travel there and speak to them, they will let you know that they saw some sort of thing fall out of the sky straight into the water and they will pinpoint for you on your map exactly where you need to go for that. So when you open up your map and you zoom out a little bit, you'll see it's at the top left corner of the lowland shore. Now you want to just head over there and see what you can find. Now it's time to dive straight down into the depths and find out where this falling star landed. Once you get down there, you'll see it made a crater in the ground. You'll need to try and pull it out and inevitably you won't be able to. At this point, you realize you need something to help you pull it out of the ground. So you'll have to return back to Sierra Lee to see if you can figure out how to do this. So when you get back to Sierra Lee, she'll suggest that you enlist the help of a few different characters around the world of Tyria. Now I know what you're thinking, here we go again, another massive difficult collection. You'll have a look at all the ascended items and you'll be like, not another heatstone situation please. Well actually, it's not another heatstone situation thankfully. There will be a specific guy you need to speak to at the Black Citadel next. His name is Morga Bloodseeker. He is the master armorsmith in the Black Citadel. So here we are, we moved over to the Black Citadel and what you need to do is run over to the crafting area with all the crafting disciplines and he will be there as you'd expect a master armorsmith to be at the armorsmithing station. Once you finish the dialogue with Morgaw, he unlocks or opens up a brand new collection. That collection is called the Falling Star Crafting List. Once you complete this collection, you can continue with the main quest line. Technically, it's still part of the main quest line and you have to do it to progress it, but they separate it out into a new collection. So let's go step by step in starting to collect each of the items on this list and I'll show you exactly where to get them and how to get them. Everything is relatively easy and very straightforward. So let's start off with the first three items in the list and those three are all back at Lowland Shore. So let's teleport back there. Each of the first three items are all purchasable from the heart vendors in Lowland Shore. You don't even need to complete the heart to purchase them, but you do need Ursus coins to purchase them. So if you don't have enough, it might be helpful to complete the heart first. When you complete the hearts, you get more curious lowland honeycombs. You can consume these for Ursus Oblige, the currency you need to purchase these items. And if you have any spare curious Mersat currencies, you can also consume those for Ursus Oblige too. Basically, you need 50 Ursus Oblige per item, and that's three items, so 150. You'll also need a very small amount of karma. So as I said before, each of these are purchasable from each of the heart vendors in Lowland Shore, so you need to work your way around to all the heart vendors here. There's only three of them, so it's pretty quick, and you just have to purchase this item and then move on. The next item on the list is Flame Legion Dark Steel. This one's in Amduat Point in the Fireheart Rise. Once you get there, just same thing as before, run over to the heart vendor and purchase the item from them. This time you only need about a thousand karma. And there we are, moving on to the next one. It's called Salvaged Grade 37 Crystal Link Coupling. What a name, am I right? This one says purchase from Zara at the Gallant's Folly Renown Heart in Mount Maelstrom. To make this easy for you, I'll just tell you where you need to look exactly. So there's a waypoint in Gauntlet Gulch, right here, with the Gallant's Folly POI. The waypoint is called Gauntlet Waypoint, that's where you need to travel to. The heart vendor is right below the waypoint here. There's Zara, right in front of me. Go ahead and purchase that Salvage Grade 17 Crystalline Coupling, and let's check out the next item on the list. This last item is called Dredge Heat Ablation Plates. It's purchased from Magister Catherine at the Tribulation Rift's Renown Heart in Dredge Haunt Cliffs. Good news, there's a waypoint right next to her called Tribulation Waypoint. Go here. 
She's right there in front of you, so just run over and purchase the last item on the list. Once you've done that, the mini quest is complete, and you can go back and check where you need to go for the main quest. Now it tells you to go back to Morgaw Bloodseeker in the Black Citadel. Now we're back at Morgaw, tell him you have everything, here's the goods. And once you go through the dialogue, he'll hand you over the newly crafted item, which is the gauntlet that will be able to pull the spear from the ground. The special gauntlet that helps heat meteors up. So once you get excited and try it on, you go back to your quest log and see where you need to go next. And the next one's pretty obvious, you need to go and try to pull the spear out, and you have to be wearing the glove to do this. You cannot do it even though you've unlocked the glove, you have to be wearing it. So we're heading back down to try and pull it out. It'll take a few seconds to pull it from the ground, but once you do this, you will be rewarded with the Falling Star. Which is a very easily attainable and almost free ascended item. And not necessarily just any item, but a spear, and not just necessarily any spear, an animated spear, which has stow and draw effects. So it's kind of like a baby legendary. Now to finish off the quest completely, we need to return to Archivist Sierra Lee and report what we've got. So here we are back at Sierra Lee. There's a little bit of dialogue you can go through with her. She references a little bit of the Wizard's Tower control over certain items, how they keep log of everything, and kind of determine what's okay to be left alone in Tyria and what's not. But they let you get away with this one, you can have it for yourself, and they trust you with it so you get to keep the Falling Star. And that is the end of the entire quest chain. Here's just a bit of footage of taking a look at what it looks like stowed and what it looks like drawn. There's some really cool animation effects that they have going with it. And the great news is you don't have to be wearing the gauntlet to get the stow and draw effects. It looks really cool if I do say so myself. Have an amazing day everyone. Happy star blazing. I just made that term up. A little bit cringe, but it was kind of cool, right? Or no. Maybe it wasn't cool. You know what? Whatever. See you later. Time to star blaze.